You're watching the Sporting Time Show with host Doug Thompson. Sponsored by Jewelry Barn and Pawn Shop. Good evening and welcome to the Sporting Time Show. Well, it is postseason football time and you can tell by all the paperwork that I have on my desk. Uh, but I'm not going to be talking about this all by myself. I'd like to bring in our co-host uh, for this week again, Mr. Brian Davis. Uh, Brian, welcome to the show. It's great to be back here, Doug. Listen, number three. <laughs> hey, number three. Listen, if you keep coming on the show, you might get a parking spot. That's fine. Where's I have it? a parking spot. Okay. It's whatever's open in the parking lot okay. is where I get to go. But welcome back. It's good to see you. And you know what? Look how prepared you are. You've got highlighter. You've got, you are ready to go. And that's it's, what I like about it's, you. It's football playoff time. It's, it is football. It's, it's great. It's and, the time of the year. And it's also volleyball playoff time. And mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes. But because of the way that we tape, uh, right now they're just in uh, the semifinals. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, we'll recap that uh, as the teams go on to uh, state. Uh, we, mm -hmm. will, we will follow those, that team that, that goes into course, Bowling Green, right now, uh, I think is a heavy favorite. And they, of course, uh, was just named at the uh, junior Kaya Barnett, who is the uh, setter, was named the uh, Region 4 Athletic Directors Player of the Year and also the fourth Region Player of the Year. Yeah. So congratulations to her. And, man, it takes her. You know, the setter's the glue. And yeah. her hitters, well, she got some hitters. Yeah, what, she a, does. what a great honor to, to receive both of those. Yes. But, you know, Bowling Green's getting a lot of accolades right now. And, I, and I'm going to have to read a little bit of this. Go ahead. But big congratulations, huge congratulations to uh, Lisa Correa, oh. uh, the girls' soccer coach at Bowling Green. Uh, the United Soccer Coaches, um, along with the Boys and Girls High School Advocacy, advocacy Groups, uh, congratulates uh, Lisa Correa on, be, on being named the 2021 High School Coach of Significance of the State. So this is a this is a huge deal. Now, she'll go to Kansas City in January for recognition uh, at the national level, but uh, she got it. I mean, she was named, which is really cool, uh, coach of significance. Uh, so they recognize uh, coaches that have character uh, using the soccer field to, to teach uh, young student athletes. Um, you know, it's an, it's an amazing honor, so congratulations. Uh, to Coach Correa, uh, well deserved. She has a big impact on players, on her players. Yeah. Big impact. She makes a big impact on them. She really yeah. does. Yeah. So, and she's been coaching uh, uh, many, many years, and, mm -hmm. and she's a good one. So, uh, let's talk a little football. You and I, uh, we've got a great guest on the show today, Mikey Benton, oh, the man. head coach <laughs> of the Russellville Panthers. Woo! Are they cruising nine and one uh, on the season right now? Uh, they get a first round bye. Because they only have three teams in their district. That's why they get a bye. Now, the question is, you're playing so well right now, and now you got to take a bye, and you got to come back. Of course, you're rested, but, you know, that momentum gets stopped because you give a bye. That's the bad part about that district with only three teams. But the, in years past, they, they haven't always gotten a bye. But right. in years past, mm -hmm. Russellville has always struggled with injuries this time of year because – they play so hard, they play both ways, but they get to the postseason and, and guys get injured, and they, they don't have 60 guys on a team, right? Right, no. So, no. you know, this might be an opportunity for guys that are a little banged up to, to heal mm -hmm. uh, and get ready. And, you know, they're going to play the, the winner of Fulton County and... Crittenden. I, I can never say that. Crittenden. Uh, Crittenden. Yep. Um, county, which they have already beat Crittenden mm -hmm. yeah. um, County. Uh, but I, I think this team has an opportunity. To, we got about a minute. We got, I think this, op, this team has an opportunity to go all the, all the way. They should be hosting every playoff game at Ray Stadium. And if the RPI looks like the way it does, yeah. I bet the semifinal will be them in Kentucky Country Day, and that will be a show that you definitely don't want to miss. <laughs> a, a show. Look, it would be fantastic. And you know this because you cover the 13th area, mm -hmm. you're, Franklin. But the fans in Russellville have, have gone just off, <laughs> off, off the charts, right? <laughs> it's championship or bust. That's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's championship or bust. It's get to Lexington and win it or 
it's a bust. They're all in. They're well, all in. <laughs> what, what a story. Mikey Benton, who played for the University mm -hmm. of Kentucky, takes his team as a fourth-year head coach back to Lexington, and they play on that field. We will see. When we come back, Mikey Benton joins us. Stay tuned. More of the Sporting Times right here on WNKY, NBC 40. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Well, my guest today is a coach who has consistently kept the program going the way that it was before he became head coach four years ago. John Myers was a head coach, Russellville Panthers, a great traditional football program. I'd like to bring to the show now the head coach of the Russellville Panthers, Mikey Benton. Coach, welcome to the show. I appreciate it. So, um, not bad. I mean, you're doing okay this year. You're nine and one. Um, you know, Russellville is always a fun program to talk about. And it is one of those programs, Coach, that uh, being a 1A school, uh, you, you have to coach because you don't have the depth that some of the bigger schools have. But this year, uh, nine and one, um, just a tremendous effort uh, by your team. Talk a little bit about the difference between last year, you guys were, were I believe, five and five, uh, and this year where you you're, you're dominating uh, in 1A. Kind of talk about the difference between the two. Uh, well, this year, of course, is my first full cycle of having guys from freshman to senior year. Uh, of course, with, you know, COVID taking place and everything uh, and Senate Bill 128 being proposed, Russellville did choose to accept it. And uh, all of my seniors chose to come back. Uh, you know, a lot of teams, of course, this year love to let us know that we're playing with a bunch of red shirt freshmen, so to say. <laughs> but, you know, hey, uh, you know, a bunch of schools had the same opportunity that we did. You know, I guess, you know, plenty of my guys, they just kind of talked and, I told them to make the best decision for them. And, you know, they all chose to come back. And so, you know, going in through the summer, uh, you know, guys have been through my system, know my expectations, the work ethic was there. Um, didn't have to put in a lot. And honestly, the best part about it for me, you know, with these guys who return, the young ones who come into the program, you know, they see the work ethic, they see how hard these guys work, how competitive they are. So, you know, it's just been, great in the sense of, you know, with having guys return and this trickling all the way down to my young guys as well. You know, it's really funny when you when you're winning, that's when people start like, well, you know, you got guys coming back, you know, this and that. If you were if you were uh, uh, five and four or six and three or whatever, nobody would say anything. Of course, that's not the way it is. You know, I want coach. I want to talk a little bit about uh, strength and conditioning, because one of the things with Russellville prior to you being there is that, you know, you don't platoon. You don't have, you guys, you guys have to play both ways. Uh, and by the end of the season, you know, you had injuries. You, it just became, the, the, it, it was thinner. You just had guys that were not playing. Talk about the conditioning and uh, maybe the difference between years past and the way that your guys are playing this year. Uh, well, like you said, you spoke to it being a small school. Everybody has to play both ways. Uh, with our lifting and conditioning, you know, I've taken plenty of things that I've been through in college, you know, in my time of playing in UK and uh, taking conditioning tools. And then, of course, you know, speaking to different people about different things that they've done, you know, at a collegiate level, you know, the things that help them out. So, you know, I just take my experiences. I talk to other people as well and see what works. And on top of that, as many athletes as what I share, I have guys that also play soccer, yeah. guys that are, you know, in the band. So it's not really too much time that any of my guys can truly just sit around, so to say, and be lazy. Yeah. Uh, during the summer, majority of my guys play basketball as well. So they'll leave from football practice, go to basketball. So condition, you know, these guys are doing it pretty much on their own, so to say, you know, with as much as what they're involved in. But, you know, plenty of them will tell you, you know, when it comes time to end of practice and we got conditioning, I'm not too 
friendly, so to say, <laughs> whenever it comes to that. You know, uh, we got a job to do, and as many times as I tell them, I try to make practice way worse than what the games will be. And, you know, for us, it's been working out pretty good this year. We got about 40 seconds left, Coach. Uh, I do want to mention the one loss that you had this year was against the 3A powerhouse, Glasgow Scotties, who happened to be number one uh, in 3A. 30 seconds, just quickly, uh, how proud of, uh, were you of your team and the way that they, they performed against Glasgow? Oh, Glasgow's an amazing team. Shout out to Coach Garmin there and, of course, Coach Myers being there as well. You know, still haven't been able to get over the hump to get my win against him just yet, <laughs> but I'll, I'll get it here soon. But uh, Glasgow's an amazing team, very physical up front, and I think the entire state now is starting to see that as well. Well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit of U.K. football, so stay right there, Coach. We're going to be right back. More of the Sporting Times right here on WNKY NBC 40. Welcome back again, my guest, Mikey Betton, the head coach of the Russellville Panthers, the 9-1 and one Russellville Panthers. And, Coach, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, your playing days at UK uh, football. Uh, you know, they're in the SEC. And, and, you know, I was a Big Ten guy until I moved down to uh, uh, this part of the country 30 years ago. Now I'm a big SEC fan. Um, but this year, UK uh, is kind of playing like Russellville. I mean, they're, they're, they're playing really well. Um, how excited are you to watch them play? And, you know, how, how far do you think they can go in a very, very tough uh, SEC uh, program? Oh, I'm very excited to see. You know, uh, being through that program, going through five years, blood, sweat, and tears, and to see it comes to this now, you know, it's very exciting to see. Uh, I buy season tickets every year. So I was there for the big upset over Florida, um, you know, but the potential's there. The defense is playing great. The offense is looking explosive. Yeah. You know, we had a uh, tough loss to a ridiculous Georgia team, you know, in my <laughs> opinion, but, you know, no one can fault us for that. But, yeah. you know, I think if we handle business and, you know, we can win out and possibly go 11-1, and one, you know, I think there might be a chance we could probably sneak in there in the playoffs. You know, you never know with the teams in front of us what can happen. You know, the plenty of big ten, big ten teams in front of us. You know, hopefully they all beat each other up and get some yeah. losses going, and we can move up there in the ranks. But that's a weak conference. I mean, come on, Big Ten. <laughs> you know, I mean, WKU. If they would have had some defense, it could have beat Michigan State. I but, agree. But that's right. another. Yeah, they, they, that's another that show. Western offense is explosive. <laughs> that's right. So tell me real quick about the, the, the UK uniform, the, the checkered things that they have on the shoulder pads, the, the checkered print. What, what, what is that? And I've been told several different stories, but, but what is the significance of that? I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you. I don't know myself. Okay. That came about uh, my senior year. Whenever we first got the black jerseys, the blue pad, and it had the checkered part on the shoulders. Uh, and honestly, I never knew. I just thought, you know, different design. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to change something up. So I don't know if there's a story behind it or well, not. I, I heard it's supposed to be like a derby, like uh, like the, the jockeys wear, the checkered. But I, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, the guys are telling <laughs> me that's a, that's a fake story. But anyway, let's get back to the Russellville Panthers. Uh, you get a first-round bye, uh, Coach. How do, you, how do you prepare your team for, for postseason? Is it any different than what you do during regular season? Uh, obviously, uh, there's got to be a tremendous amount of excitement in the locker room with the players. How do you prepare them for postseason? Uh, we don't do anything different. We keep it the exact same. Uh, you know, what I tell these guys is the regular season, you just get 10 quizzes just to get, you know, ready for the uh, big test, which, of course, is the playoffs. Uh, you know, our main goal, of course, was to be first place in our district. You know, being in a three team, we knew we would get that by. So that was the goal that we had. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were able to come up with a big win over Crittenden County. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, which, of course, is going to be a big thing for us. And, uh, you know, we just literally take it day by day, you know, focus on offense, defense, special teams, come in and do, you know, what we've always done. And, you know, uh, Ray is always going to play a big part, you yeah. know, in a home field advantage for us. You know, our fans, usually they're pretty crazy there and, you know, love uh, 
give another team a hard time there on the sideline. So, you know, hopefully it goes in our favor. It's one of the, it's one of the most historic uh, football stadiums in the state of Kentucky. Uh, Ray Stadium is, is beautiful. It's so traditional and it's really cool. If you haven't gone to a Russellville Panther football game, you got to go because uh, you, you got to check it off your list. Now, Coach, uh, I'm going to say something. You're probably not going to agree with me, but I, I honestly think you should be Coach of the Year. I, I do. I'm gonna, that's my vote, even though I don't have a vote, but I'm going to cast the vote because what you've done with that program over the years uh, is incredible, and what you've done uh, with what you've had, regardless if the guys came back or not, you got a limited amount of guys. Uh, real quick, uh, 45 seconds left. Winning always produces great things. Um, have you seen youth programs increase? Have you seen more interest in your program because of the success that you've brought to, to Russellville? we got about 30 seconds. Yeah, I definitely have. Uh, one of the first things that I tried to put in place when I became head coach is our youth program, and uh, it has grown like crazy every year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the excitement of going to those games on Saturdays and seeing those young ones play, you know, we definitely got some monsters on the way. So, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited, you know, by the time they get up here to me in high school. I love that very much. Coach, congratulations. Good luck in postseason. And thank you very much for joining me. All right, we're going to take a short Appreciate break. It. When we come back, Brian D. and I close things out on this Sporting Time show on WNKY NBC 40. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Mikey, for being my guest today. And uh, wh what a really fun interview. Uh, you know, he's, he's the kind of coach you could talk to more than, than a couple of segments. But yeah. um, you, you, he's very excited. And he's a oh, really he good be. coach. He should be. I mean, look at the team he has. I mean, that team is talented enough to win a championship. Well, one of the things that really got my attention is when they played Glasgow. And, yes, they lost to Glasgow, but... Anybody that has seen this 3A team play, uh, if you didn't know it, you wouldn't know they were 3A. And, and I'm talking about Glasgow. Oh, yeah. And it was a, it was a really good game. And, um, man, they, they played well. I just wonder because Baptiste, Brandon Baptiste, and Anthony Woodard did not play at that time because they were not eligible yet to play. What would happen now if they play each other? Yeah. That's what I would love to see, but unfortunately we can't see that now. Anthony so. Woodard is one of those athletes that is he, he's an athlete that can do anything. I mean, he is a great athlete. He'll put on a show for you. Yes, he will. <laughs> he will. He'll put he on the will. show. He, he will. will. So let's talk a little bit. Let's talk postseason football for a second, and let's start with 3A. And we're talking about Glasgow here. Uh, Glasgow uh, will play Hart County in the first round. And, you know, Glasgow is, is number one in Class 3A, as co according to the RPI. Right. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't see them having an issue with Hart County. Uh, I don't see them. They've already beat Taylor County. They've already beaten Adair County in the second round, you know, by 13, 14 points, right? Not, right. A, not a wipeout. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I see this team uh, going really deep into these playoffs. They should, too, be played on Thanksgiving weekend. They should be. Yeah. So... Uh, let's see what happens with them. Uh, we could have three local teams in the state championship weekend in Lexington, which will be I agree. great. I don't think it's been, what, 2011 since we had three teams in the uh, championship, yep. which I think that year was Franco Simpson, Bowling Green, and Glasgow. Yep. So I think that this would be great if we had three local teams to get to Lexington. Yeah, and I've already, you know, gone on the record. I think that Glasgow's going to win the, the 3A state championship. Uh, but when you look at the bracket, I think that they have – a really nice route they do. to get to uh, the semifinals, and I think they'll take care of business there. I think uh, uh, Christian Academy of Louisville will, will be the team that they're going to meet uh, in the semifinals. Reminder once again, though, after that second round of the brackets, it gets adjusted based on RPI. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so remember, keep that in mind. Yeah, so. don't, I, yeah don't get me started on that. Uh, it's I confusing know. enough. And now they get to switch up the the, the and you're right you're, you're right is. so yeah. this really doesn't so make every, any so difference. The first two rounds you can go by the bracket. After that, everything gets jumbled up. Okay, so uh, unjumble this for me in 4A. This is uh, in 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 our area, our districts in 4A is is really crazy. I mean, there are it, it can be Allen County, Franklin Simpson, 
uh, is on a roll. Uh, Warren East uh, has shown that they, they have teeth as well. Um, who do you think has the edge in 4A? Yeah, that, Ares, that's a good question. That is the million dollar question. Who knows? Because I mean, Warren East has got injuries, so they got to recover from that, hopefully. Uh, Alan Kine Scott's full. Uh, if Brad can eliminate the penalties as well, too. Franklin Simpson, if they could get off a great start, they will be hard to stop too as well. It's 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 gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. The winner of that district gets Russell County in the opening round, and the other two have to play each other. Right. So it is pretty much survival of the fittest, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, again, stay tuned. We'll let you know uh, <laughs> as it progresses on. But uh, 4A is just really up for grabs. 5A uh, is very interesting, and this is. Uh, Bowling Green and Green, Greenwood face off. Um, look, at, I am not going to, to say that Greenwood uh, doesn't have a chance in it, this game. They do. I think that they have skilled players. they got a great quarterback in Shock, Shockley. Uh, but they have to play uh, their A game. They can't have turnovers. They can't have miscues against Bowling Green. Bowling Green's got a really great defense offensively. They're, they're trying to get their legs. But uh, if... Bowling Green goes on, we got about a minute, and they play South Warren. Uh, man, this it's just crazy, right? You know the defense will be ready, and Coach Spader will have them ready, just like he did last year, when we all thought that South Warren was going to win that thing, and then here comes Coach Spader in defense, and took him right out. <laughs> you never know. I, you can't bet against that man. Don't bet against that man. Well, these are teams, uh, South Warren and Bowling Green, that one has won during the regular season, uh, big, and then they come back in postseason and they lose, yep. and it has flip flopped. Uh, we got about 30 seconds again. Greenwood, Bowling Green, that is up for grabs. Uh, yep. Again, a lot of talent on Greenwood, but they got to play a perfect game. 20 seconds. Uh, how do you see it working out? Do you think it's going to be a Bowling Green South Warren? Oh, I, I think so. I think so. I, I, I think so. I mean, Greenwood's a great football team, but you're in the district again against South Warren and Bowling Green. Brian. Thank you much for joining me again. Thanks. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great week for Doug Thompson and Brian Davis. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Good night.